Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you. Way down from Norwich Walk, it was raining in Belgrade, so rain might be in the cards today. But it's good that we can be in here warm and dry and with each other. So welcome to all of you. Good to be with all of you, I believe, in the, this being the last Sunday in July. Hard to believe, isn't it? Well, with that said, uh, let's just ask if there are any announcements this morning. Anything that needs to be mentioned before we get started in worship? Yes, sir. Hi, Joe. Okay, was his name Ted? Ted, yep, he's in the bulletin. If you take a notice, I have his name in the prayer request. So we continue to keep Ted in prayer. We'll come back to that during our time of prayer. Are there any other announcements? If not, join me now in our call to worship this morning, which is taken from Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Glory in God's wonderful name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and judgments God has uttered. The Lord is our God, whose judgments are all the earth. The Lord is mindful of his everlasting covenant, of the word commanded for a thousand generations. Can you join with me now in prayer together? Let us pray. God of the insistent spirit, we feel you within us, rearranging our lives and desires, refurbishing our hearts as your home. God of the intimate spirit, you not only treasure all that once happened, you are the promise of all that is to come. You do not hold yourself far away from us. You know our deepest needs as your own. From this assurance, we draw our hope, our confidence, our strength. Bless us in this knowledge as we worship together today in your name. Amen. May we speak together the glory of Hartford. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 to 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful and lovely. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give to her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I did not serve with you for Rachel. Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other one also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to wife. The New Testament reading is uh, Romans. Uh, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that in everything God works for good, with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to this? God is for us, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised from the dead? who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who shall, call, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are no more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.
And this morning's gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. I'll begin reading verses 31 through 33 and then moving over to verses 44 through 52. He put before them, that is Jesus, another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous. Throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household. Brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. May God add God's blessing upon the hearing and reading of these words. light and love, God of darkness, God of goodness, 
We thank you for this time in which we gather. May our hearts be filled with what you offer us today. Amen. How many of us have gaps in our life that need to be filled? I was thinking about that this past week as I made an appointment with my dentist to get a cavity filled. I have a cavity in the back of my mouth, and it's not really painful. I actually think it's a, a filling that came out, but uh, strange how God kind of works, not only in Scripture, but also in our lives. And as I read the Scripture readings for today, I got thinking about gaps and filling gaps, and I said, well, it's time to fill that gap in my life, that cavity in the back of my mouth. We all have some kind of gaps in our lives that need to be filled. Things in our life that are kind of either left hanging or openings in our lives that are not filled, something that's missing. But when we think about the question of whether or not we have gaps in our lives, one of the great questions that comes back for us as, Christ as Christians, as we think about the needs of others, is this. Do we see gaps in the lives of other people that perhaps we can fill. Now, with that said, there are a lot of different kinds of gaps. Gaps in our lives, gaps around us. What is a gap? Well, it's something left open, empty, maybe lonely, maybe unfulfilled. Different kinds of gaps. There's some big gaps in the barn floor at my house. I almost fell through one the other day. I never seem to make time or have time to fix those gaps. Always one of those things I keep putting off, but I know eventually I've got to fix those gaps. We have gaps in our homes. So when we start thinking towards winter, I won't say that too loud, we'll start filling up those gaps around our house to let the, keep the cold air out. And there are other kinds of gaps, physical gaps, memory gaps. I have a, a gap, I think, when it comes to names. I'm not, I have a difficult time remembering people's names. Uh, I can re rem remember a face very quickly, but names, they sometimes, well, there's a gap there. And then there are gaps left unfulfilled in kind of tragic ways. Particularly when we think about people we love who are no longer with us. Unfulfilled gaps around deaths of people we love in life. People who leave us perhaps too soon or too early or just leave us at all, and we're left with an emotional gap. And those are hard gaps to fill. And then there are spiritual gaps where we struggle, struggle kind of inwardly with understanding God. And I think we all fit into that category in some way or another. We all struggle in some ways to totally understand or even to partially understand God and the gaps that are kind of in that relationship that we have. For example, we know God loves us. So why do bad things happen to good people? I get that question asked to me more than perhaps any other in one way or another. And then we have Jesus' words which remind us of the stumbling blocks that are often put before us because of people's misunderstanding of his purpose. And that leads us back to those spiritual gaps that all of us kind of struggle with in one way or another as we consider our lives in light of our faith. I think today's readings uh, all three of them remind us of gaps and how gaps can be filled. The really intriguing Genesis story, which can be kind of troubling at, at reading it, particularly from our vantage point now uh, in these more recent times. But what I take from that story is really Jacob trying and striving to fill a gap, a requirement for Laban to earn, if you will, um, to, to earn this love of, of Rachel. And it's kind of an outdated and outmoded, thank goodness, way of kind of looking at how to fill a gap. But yet we can see in this kind of Old Testament story, this struggle, this, this man is having to fill this gap of love in his life and the things that he has to go through to get to that love. And then in Matthew's Gospel, trying to fill the gap of understanding the ultimate value of the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus is kind of struggling with and trying to explain it to us 
and to those around him at the time, using all kinds of things, you know, seeds and pearls and treasures and fields. You know, this seed, this mustard seed, which kind of keeps coming up in, in our faith, something seemingly so small that grows beyond our imaginations. This is the kingdom of God. And leavened bread rising and growing. And then the wonderful stories of the treasure in the field and the pearl of great value, which point to this understanding that the kingdom of God is worth giving everything else up for to attain it. And Jesus is trying to make this point in various ways so we can get it and recognize what truly is important in life. Helping to fill that gap of what is really needed in our life as opposed to what we think we need. And then we come to this, this very important and I think very uh, specific and very cherished chapter in Romans, chapter 8. We've heard many of the verses in that chapter said at different times throughout our lives, particularly at funerals, sometimes at weddings. Nothing can separate us from God's love. This is what Paul would have us to believe. Nothing can separate us. No gap can be big enough, Paul would have us understand, to separate us from how much God loves us and how in turn we show that love to God and to others. As he concludes, for those who truly put their faith in God, the gap is filled. And one way that we fill that gap, and, and really what I'd like us to lead into a little bit today, is the spiritual gap that is filled with prayer. And the importance of prayer. And how prayer isn't something that's necessarily spoken, or something that's even necessarily always thought about consciously. It's a state of being. It's being, as Paul would have us to believe, being in prayer throughout our lives, throughout our days. A spiritual gap that is filled with prayer, that connection to God. As Paul puts it, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. Words don't encapsulate or help us completely understand what prayer is. It's something that we live and are a part of and intertwined with in our faith. That's truly filling the gap between us in God. Intercessory prayer, the idea of God interceding in our lives, interceding through us. That is God altering our lives. How God gets involved in our lives on a continual basis and fills those gaps through our faith. My grandmother was a very interesting lady. She was a school teacher for many years in a primary school in Norridgewell. And she was always interceding in the lives of her students in very tangible ways. She would often see a student in class who, whose socks had holes in them, who didn't have food to eat during lunchtime, or warm enough clothes during the wintertime. And she would bring in socks and boots and mittens and food to her students. Now, some people thought she was interceding too much. And she sometimes was told, you know, you need to stay out of our child's business. But you know what? She never did. She was always involved in the lives of her students. Why was that? It's because she loved them care deeply for them. And where there is a relationship of love and care, there is a need for intersection, involvement, filling the gaps. God loves us as well. He wants to fill the gap and gaps in our lives by helping us out of that great love that God has for his creations. That's how God intercedes in our lives. But Paul takes it another step. And this is really important. He takes it a step further. As God intercedes in our lives, we, you and I, are to intercede in the lives of others. We are to fill the gap with the most powerful gap filler in the world, and that is prayer. And where that prayer leads us in our faith. Now, no, uh, 
Prayer is, is not some kind of super glue or stuff that will fill all the gaps in our homes during the winter time and fix those old barn boards in my in my uh, my barn. But it's in a sense it's more powerful. It is the, the gap filler in our lives that connects us to God and fills us with God's Spirit. We have a time, and there's a few moments we'll engage in. We call it intercessory prayer, a time in which we think about the needs of others. We intercede into their lives out of care and love. Standing in the gap, filling that gap, helping others, filling the needs and the concerns for others, our neighbors, even our nation, praying and taking into consideration the needs that are there, the gaps that are all around us, and you know where they are, not only in your life, but in the lives of our community right now as we struggle with so many issues. Taking our thoughts, our prayers, our lives directly to Jesus and saying, where can I fill the gap? Help me. And it can be simple. My mother told me this past week, she said she was tucking her little girl into bed and um, the little girl told the mom about a friend that she had at school whose hair was falling out. And she encouraged the little girl to pray. She said, well, we need to pray about that. And the daughter's prayer was just great. She said, Jesus, please hold Amy's hair on her head. Well, I was told later that the little girl, Amy, continued to lose, your, lose her hair. She was diagnosed with a condition which I think is called uh, alopecia. Alopecia, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And because of this, she could lose all of her hair permanently. So the little girl was encouraged to pray more. But this time the prayer was a little different, her mom told me. She said, dear, dear Jesus, if you won't hold Amy's hair on her head, would you please just hold me? Isn't that beautiful? See, that's really what intercessory prayer is about. It's about reaching out and filling the gaps in the lives that we, we all have as we struggle. It's not about God moving mountains, but moving us to care for others, to love others, to be there for others as God is there for us, filling the gaps for others. Right behind God, in the footsteps of Jesus, doing the same thing. And I just want to say this to you, outside of, outside of worship, prayer, and particularly the prayers in which we reach out for the needs of others, is the most important aspect of your faith, as you walk with God. And what are the components of that? Somebody asked that the other day, and I was kind of rereading 1 Timothy, and I came up with this. When we think about intercessory prayer, it comes down to really four components. And they all begin with the word, a letter B. Bind, bend, be, beam. Bind, bend, be, beam. That is, bind. Through prayer and then filling the gaps we have in the lives of others through prayer, Bind yourself to God's will first, not yours. Seek first the kingdom of God. Bind yourself to God's will in prayer. Bend. Bend to God's way. Not long ago, I talked about the flowers in my office. Every time I turn the plant pot, they turn towards the sun. That's an example to us. Bend to God's way, not your own. Bend to God's will. Be. Now this is the best. Be. Simply be in God's presence as often as you can. Be. It's a great habit to get into. Just being with God. And finally, being. Being with thanksgiving. Consider in those times when you feel that the world is too heavy, carry or that there are too many needs out there, think about the things that God has blessed you with. Be in the spirit of thanksgiving and beam through that 
in a spirit of gratitude. I pray this is all something that we can take part in as a community as we think about the needs that we have, but more importantly, the needs of others. Let us pray. We just thank you today, God, that you can open us to the possibilities of your spirit working in our lives and thereby working in the lives of others. Lord, may we fill those gaps in the lives of those who are in need. We ask it in your name. Amen. I was thinking of intercessory prayer. I would just draw your attention to the back of your bulletins for a few moments. We have added a few names and some concerns. And I'd just like to ask if there are other concerns that would like to be shared today. Stories or concerns. Raise your hand. See who's speaking. Anybody have something they need to pray for? Well, if not, let's be in a spirit of prayer and take a few moments of silence as we reflect upon perhaps the gaps in our lives, the gaps within our communities, and how God fills those gaps. Let us pray. Out of this silent sky, we come to pray. To pray for all people, for all nations, and for your church. We ask today for prayers for God's church, for this church here at the South Parish Congregational Church and for all who serve it, for this assembly, and for all God's people everywhere, we pray for the church. We ask in prayer for the good earth to be sustained, that all people may respect its resources, preserve its future, and enjoy its fruits in their season. We pray for the soil and for the sea. We pray today for leaders of nations, that they may act deliberately and dispassionately, and that they would work for the good of all. We pray for all those who govern. We pray today for peace, that peoples of the world may live in safety and without fear. In that same way, we pray for justice. We pray for all of humanity. And we pray for peace. We pray today for the wealthy, the free, and the healthy that they may use their possessions to aid those who are in need. And we pray today for compassion, for compassion to be among all people. And considering the concerns we have in our bulletin and the names that have been shared, we ask prayers for the sick, for the sorrowing, and for those who are alone. We pray for those in need of trouble. God of all living, hear the prayers of your faithful people and grant our requests. Strengthen us for the tasks you give us and bring us at last to praise you forever. Through your son, Jesus Christ, who once taught us to pray saying, our father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to leave today, and as we consider the gaps in our lives and the gaps that we all may face during the course of this week, may we go now in the fullness of God's faith, knowing that we are part of filling those gaps and making this life better for ourselves, but most especially for others. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.